Hello and welcome back to the Critic Uculus on a Monk and today we are in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlords and this video is about workshops versus caravans. Yes, that's right. In Calradia, money is key. You need every single dinar you can get your hands on early game, late game for all kinds of different reasons and you need a huge ton of it. Now, passive income is king in Mountain Blade Bannerlords. And the two key forms of passive income you have at the beginning of your game are workshops or caravans. And to new players and to players that haven't put a huge ton of time into these games, it can be really difficult to really to decide where to put your money. Workshops typically cost 30 to 35,000 dinars to actually grab. And caravans equally cost 15 to 22 and a half thousand dinars as well. So choosing which one to go and which route to invest in can be really difficult. However, this video, I aim to cut it all down for you guys, explain what I think the benefits of each are, and hopefully help you guys out in your game. And of course, if this is the kind of content that you want to see, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and maybe think about joining the Discord. We have an active and growing Discord. We've got quite a few Banner Lords players there too, so if you ever stuck on anything or just want to discuss your game and how it's going, then the link for that is down in the description. Join the server and say hi. Okay, first is first, let's talk about the workshops. Now, as you can see, I have seven um, workshops here, all different kinds of workshops from smithies and breweries and wine presses, potteries, olive presses, you name it, we have got it right here. Now, in the console version that we have, in my opinion, there really isn't one different type of workshop that actually works better than any others. They all provide a passive income. Sometimes they can get stuck and give you absolutely nothing. If that does happen, go to whichever you know workshop you have, look at the inputs, look at the outputs, sell the inputs to the town, buy the outputs, and hopefully you can kick start your workshop into action. Hopefully you will be turning a profit after that. Like I said, guys, workshops are interesting because there isn't really any one that works really well. It really depends on where it is, what location it's under, and what's currently going on. Now, the pluses with the workshops is you can buy a building and pretty much forget about it early game. Late game, it gets a little bit more tricky because if you are part of a kingdom and you are at war, then the warring kingdom, you know, you're not going to be earning any money off. So keeping your workshops in your own kingdom is what you're going to have to do. Now, if you do have a workshop that isn't working for you, you can always click here and choose and retool your workshop into whatever it is you happen to be. It does cost a little bit of money, but it could be more than worth it to actually change your workshop than just to have a workshop not be profitable. As you saw, we were turning over absolutely nothing in that workshop. So, you know, changing it up was the key thing to do here. One thing I would recommend when choosing a workshop, when maybe retooling a workshop, is making sure you're not making um, a workshop that there is already one, two, three of them in town. You want to be the only shop, the only type of workshop in a town. That way you're not competing for business. Workshops cost an awful lot of money. Um, on average, you do get an okay return. It really does depend. Like I said, workshops are kind of, you buy them, you forget about them, they're going to be earning you money. Caravans, on the other hand, cost you 15,000 dinars. And of course, these guys are shops that are just actively going around the map. And of course, they do cost you a companion. 
Now, there is one thing you can do. You can upgrade your caravan and have it be an upgraded caravan. Now, what that actually means is that it gives you regular troops instead of your caravan guards. Now, the downside of having these regular troops, yes, they're a little bit tougher, but they actually move on the map slower than your actual main regular caravan and what your caravans need is speed you know to escape the bandits to escape um whichever faction you happen to have annoyed at any given time so i would recommend you guys just stick into the regular caravans that cost fifteen thousand dinars and let them do their business now when it comes to workshops versus caravans, as you saw, I'm a maxed out clan. I can't possibly have any more workshops. I can only have seven workshops, however. When it comes to caravans, I can have almost an unlimited supply of caravans. I can have as many caravans as I have companions and family members to, you know, be fielding them. Personally, I prefer my caravans because I can have so many more of them and they seem to churn out a bit more money as well. You can make upwards of a thousand dinars per day per caravan, given a few things going your way. So, you know, your caravan costing you 15,000 dinars and a companion actually pays off in the long run. Now, I admit, it seems to be a lot, especially at the beginning of the game. 15,000 dinars and a companion. There's no guarantee that it's going to work out either because your caravan could get jumped along the way. It's one of those things. When that does happen, just simply reinvest into another caravan. I've never had a caravan not actually make a profit in the long run. Um, they seem to be the most reliable way to make passive income in the game one thing i would recommend to you guys though is to actually spread out your caravan placement now you can start a caravan anywhere on the map it doesn't mean that your caravan is going to be operating in that one location you may start a caravan all the way up in the north and your caravan is going to wander all the way down south it goes town to town however what I would recommend is that you don't have, you don't simply buy 10 caravans in one town because it has to work outwards. And you're going to have those 10 caravans all working in the same area, all competing for the same goods, all competing for the same prices. And you're not going to be able to earn as much money as you would, say, put in 10 caravans on 10 different points of the map. If you are lazy, though, given enough time, your caravans will work their way out. They will balance themselves out and gradually start making the money they should be making had you spread them out in the first place. But to speed things up a little bit, do yourself a favor and do that job for them. Now, what makes a successful caravan? Well, there are a few things that go into that. Most notably, it's the companion that you choose to be the leader of that caravan. And there's a few different stats and traits that you can look out for when thinking about who to hire as a caravan, you know, leader. That being said, I do have a lot of caravans. As you can see, I have a huge ton of caravans. Um, I pretty much have every single companion I can have out there with their own caravan making me passive income. So, you know, maybe the thought of who should be the caravan leader is only vital if your first one or two caravans, the first couple that you absolutely need to succeed. I will say this though, being a caravan leader comes with a few benefits. You could put your son or a family member, maybe a brand new companion you've only just recruited um, in as a caravan leader and you'll see that they will start pumping up major, major points. Um, they level all kinds of things from tracking to scouting um, to uh, tradesmanship they actually you know simulate the battles so they get a ton of points in leadership or quartermaster um, they get points in horsemanship so 
it's a great way to kind of level your new, fresher, younger companions and family members as well. Now, if we have a little look-see here, we can see who's making us a ton of money. And the tracker is making us a huge ton of money with over a thousand dinars per day. And if we have a little look at the tracker, we can see that his stats don't necessarily indicate why he would be making so much money. Trade-wise, he only has 17 points in trade. Now, having a character high in trade is should mean that you're going to be able to turn over a bigger profit. What the tracker does have, however, is a lot of points into scouting. Scouting means that that party, that caravan, can stay alive longer than other caravans would, perhaps, because they can see the enemies approaching them, perhaps before the enemies can even see them. Having high tracking on your caravan leader is a really, really good quality. Having a character with a high trade leader caravan again is going to be good because they're going to be able to buy those products at a cheaper price one thing i would note however if you're going to be leveling up a trade skill on a companion you're going to be wanting to take stats and perks that are to do with trade goods so your basic foods for instance they're the things that your caravans are going to be buying and trading they're not going to be buying up a ton of horses and trading those across the map. And if we look at another companion we have that is making us a huge ton of money, you can see that they have no uh, scouting really, um, but they do have a high trade perk. And of course, this is probably going to be helping them um, in making us extra money. Now, I've been running my game for a very, very long time. And as you can see, we are waiting in this town right now for the days to tick by. But as we do, my caravans are out there making and doing what they do. They're earning a ton of experience, leveling up a ton of different points and a ton of different skills just for being out there. So like I said, guys, this is proof. Um, having your caravan out there is a great way to level up your companions. And as you can see, we're turning over a decent profit considering we have a you know a lot of troops we're not exactly early on in this game our guys are making a huge ton of profit and while um my workshops are capped at seven and of course i can have almost unlimited caravans you can see that my workshops really aren't bringing in the kind of money um, that my caravans are Unfortunately, given any kind of date, my workshops never really went up above 2,400 dinars, whereas my caravans could make me a huge amount of money. One caravan making me 1,400 dinars per day for a limited period of time. But there you have it, guys. That is my idea in verses between a caravan and a workshop. In my opinion, given the kind of time I put into this game, I would always go for a caravan first. I'm not saying don't grab yourself up a workshop, but 33,000 dinars for a 250 dinar per day you know return just does not cut it it takes far too long to earn your money back and of course you really do have to think about who you go to war with where you ally with and of course if you buy this investment early game then that does limit when you can make your own kingdom and what you have to do after that because if you go to war where that you know workshop is you're going to be losing that money you're going to have to work it that's another reinvestment that you're going to have to make and it's just a little bit more complicated with a slower return of course the workshops do come with the fact that they cannot be raided and wiped off the map like your caravans but i guess in a way that's why the caravans make you that much more money it's more worthwhile to repurchase them um, in the short term for them to be giving you that return in the long term but hopefully i've explained it 
well enough for you guys. Hopefully I put enough detail in it. If I haven't gone into enough detail about any one thing, let me know down in the comments. Be happy to reply to you guys, make another video, maybe invite you to join a Discord. We do have that Discord. It is pretty useful to kind of have conversations like this um, within it. A little bit easier than the comments anyway. Anyway, I have been a monk, we've been a Chrissy Kudos, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.